Hi, everybody, and welcome today. Um, we are presenting Money Saving Hacks, Student Discounts, and Other Tips to Be More Financially Savvy. Um, as Sharon mentioned earlier, we are um, recording the session. So if um, you don't want to be uh, seen or heard, please um, mute yourself and uh, turn off your video. Um, but we are encouraging interaction through um, reactions, um, sending us notes in the chat, um, and we'll, we'll get to any questions you have too, hopefully. Um, so we plan on being done about 45 minutes and hope you um, get something out of the session. All right, so um, next slide, thanks. So um, we mentioned that it is money saving hacks, student discounts and other tips to be financially savvy, but we're actually starting with the financially savvy because um, you can't be financially savvy unless you know how much money you have coming in and going out. So um, one of the biggest things that we wanna just start with is make a budget and stick to it. Um, so how do you do that? Um, really knowing again, what money is coming in and what money is going out. Uh, so talk it out. Um, if you are working with your parents, with a significant other, um, even roommates, you need to talk about your finances. Communication is really important. So be clear about expectations. If you um, and your parents have taken out loans, are you paying them back? When are you paying them back? How much are you responsible for paying? Um, which again, same goes with roommates. If you're sharing any bills and whatnot, um, really having that conversation up front is really important. Um, and then listing expenses. So what are you paying for? Like, what are your bills every month? What um, do you have responsibility for? How much are they exactly? And when are they due? Um, that can be really important. And then track your spending. So beyond your regular bills that you have day to day or month to month, um, what are you spending? So the, the key to a budget, again, is knowing what's coming in, what's going out. So writing down, keeping track of all of the um, things that you're paying for, food, coffee, um, gas, tolls, uh, nails, whatever it is, um, you know, dinner out with friends, make sure that you're tracking that. Um, and then taking your budget to the next level is when you can really start having an emergency fund and setting aside some money for savings and whatnot um, and thinking about how you can earn some extra money. Um, and listed here, we have some things that you may be able to use to help you with all of this. So you can do this in um, a notebook. You can do this in an Excel worksheet, but there's also lots of apps and tools that are really helpful. So um, Mint is a great one, NerdWallet, ConsumerCredit.com. KeyBank actually has quite a few free um, materials on their site to look into and learn more about all of this. Uh, but you, there's lots of different things that you can use. Uh, just make sure that they're reliable. Do your, do your um, background checks on everything before you sign up for something. Great. Um, and then we're gonna move into um, some more tips. Next, oh, there we go. So establishing credit. Um, credit is something that is important when you go to make large purchases um, in your future. So you need to have credit in order to um, get loans, um, to, buy a car, uh, they actually check your credit for lots of things that you wouldn't expect. Um, so how do you start doing that as a, as a young person? How do you start establishing your credit? Um, and one of the things you can do is um, ask your parents or some somebody in your family possibly to authorize you as a user on their credit card. So this allows them um, and you to work together to make sure that um, everything gets paid on time, to know what the limits are and whatnot, but it starts to begin to build your credit. Um, you can apply for a secured credit card, um, which a lot of people, um, does anybody, if you know what a secured credit, are, credit card is, give a thumbs up for us. Let's see, because this, this one is sometimes new for folks seeing any. So great. So we might learn something here. Oh, we got one. Great, Eleni. That's awesome. Um, a secured credit card um, is basically where you are 
putting a uh, like a security deposit down on that on that credit card. So um, say you put $500 down when you open it, that is typically going to be your limit. And then you can use up to that $500, but you're making the monthly payments to pay it back. So you're putting the money down as a security um, and then you, you use that money and you pay it back monthly. And by paying it back on time um, with interest and whatnot, that starts to establish your credit as well. And then if you do well in that, it's more likely that you'll be um, approved for an unsecured credit card, which is what most of us are familiar with. When you sign up for a Chase or a Visa, um, I'm sorry, a Visa or a MasterCard, um, that you know, you're, you're kind of taking out that loan, that credit. Um, but this, the secured credit card can often help you get there. Um, you can apply for a loan with a co-signer. I um, mean, it doesn't have to be a big loan to start with. It can just be, um, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, and then you pay that back regularly and on time. And again, it starts to establish that credit for you. Um, knowing your credit score is important. So um, that's something that you should look into. Um, and an easy way to do that is to do your credit report. Um, and you can do this for free. Right now during COVID, you can um, actually do this more often. You see the website that we recommend here, which is um, the site that you should go through. It's called annualcreditreport.com. It's free. It's not linked to any ads or um, any other, you're not gonna get spammed because of it. It allows you to get your credit um, report from the three big companies that, that do that, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Um, and right now during COVID, there's been a lot of um, identity theft and, and whatnot. So they're allowing you to do it more than once a year for free. So it's a great tool and we really recommend that you do that. Um, so establishing credit early is gonna help you um, with all of your uh, financial savviness in the future. I just wanted to add a real world example that's recently happened to me around checking your credit report and making sure that you're staying on top of knowing what's on that report and then addressing things if you do recognize that there might be an error or that you've been the victim of identity fraud. So recently I was informed by RET, my employer, that someone had filed un uh, unemployment insurance in my name. And they wanted to uh, check and verify that I had done that. And obviously I had not done that. Um, I have been working throughout the pandemic here at RIT. And so that was the first indication that someone had um, possibly hacked into my identity and used it um, you know, fraudulently. So at that time uh, they gave me some steps to follow one of which was to report to the Department of Labor immediately that that was a fraudulent claim. Um, also that I would check my credit report, which is something that I uh, do uh, pretty regularly, but had not in the last few months. And so I took the opportunity at that moment to go in and run the report and verify that everything that was on there was correct and that nothing new, no inquiries had been there, no new lines of credit had been established in my name without me knowing it, and then froze my credit. So I worked with each of the three credit reporting agencies and I actually froze my credit. So this way, no individual that may have um, some of my identity information, like my social security number, could establish credit in my name. And if they did, then obviously that um, attempt would be shut down. There would be this fraud alert um, that would be generated. And so I actually experienced this, you know, very, very recently. And in doing some of these steps and talking to some of my colleagues, it became clear that this is actually something that is happening quite frequently. And so um, if anyone that is participating today has not checked your credit report, uh, we highly encourage that that is homework that you leave this presentation um, and you immediately go and take advantage of that, that you check your credit report, that everything that you're seeing there is something that you recognize. Um, and if there is something that is standing out to you um, and you're unsure of, that you do some homework and investigate that further and then follow the steps that you would need to, to follow if there was something that was fraudulently on there. Everyone should really be very diligent while we are in the middle of this pandemic and some of this activity is heightened. Um, and so again, that is your homework from today. We hope that everyone will go and take advantage of that.
So the last um, tip about being financially savvy is one that I think that a lot of college students um, can relate to. You're always looking for an opportunity to um, maybe find or add some income. And people often overlook that you actually might have that in your own closet or in your own apartment. Um, it might be something that you own that you no longer have a use for. Uh, maybe you're looking to um, upgrade and you're not really sure what to do with a particular item that you have, but there might be a way that you can actually turn that into some extra cash for yourself. Um, a lot of these apps like Poshmark, Offer Up, Let It Go, and now Facebook Marketplace um, are very popular right now. Um, Facebook Marketplace, I think, has really um, sort of become the premier or the most utilized site um, that a lot of people are selling on. Uh, it's very easy to do. And um, what, a couple things to know about when you're doing that is um, you want to um, track some of this as you are doing sales. In most cases, unless you are considered a store and you actually establish yourself that way um, with Facebook Marketplace, uh, you're selling personal goods at a loss. So you're selling them usually for less than what you purchased for. And generally there isn't going to be a tax liability for you. Some of these sites do an excellent job of actually providing sales reports for you and others, not so much. Um, I can tell you that Poshmark has a downloadable Excel spreadsheet that you can actually um, get for any period of time that you indicate. So you can see what you listed, how much you listed it for and what you profited. Um, Marketplace does not do that same um, Excel spreadsheet, and you really need to make sure that you have this information um, available to you in the event um, that the IRS was to audit you and ask about additional income. Um, as I said, the general guidance is if you're selling these items for less than the value that you purchased them, they're personal goods, you generally don't have a tax liability. Um, but if you were acting in a, in a store capacity, you would buy something and then try to sell it at a greater price than what you purchased it for. There could be tax liability with that and you should have some accurate records. If you're gonna go this route, and a lot of people are doing this, you know, maybe you have a pair of jeans or a purse or um, you have a computer or a cell phone and you take advantage of any of these sites, Poshmark is more for clothes and um, home goods. Facebook Marketplace is really broad and you can sell a whole variety of things on there. Um, one of the things that you want to do is you wanna make sure that you're protecting yourself. You need to protect yourself because in many cases you have to establish either a credit card, a bank account, or you have to connect one of the apps that you'll see the images for on the screen like Venmo or Cash App or PayPal and I think what people are maybe not as aware of is that the security with some of those apps um, is not as high as a bank. And so um, if someone were to hack into your Venmo account or your cash app, you really may be putting your assets um, you know, at risk. And so a general rule of thumb is to try to have a separate account that you connect to those type of apps so that you don't have all of your savings and all of your checking account connected to these apps so that in the event that you were hacked or someone gains entry, that they're not able to empty your entire account. So you could establish another account, preferably at another bank, um, and have a small amount of funds in there, maybe 200, $250. You really can kind of gauge how much are you using Venmo or Cash App or PayPal to transfer money back and forth between yourself and maybe friends or family. Um, if you're using some of these um, sales sites like Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace, a good rule of thumb is to make sure you're not letting your balance accrue to be something so high that in the event it was hacked, that the funds would then be transferred to somebody else. So you want to, and you do have the ability to um, move the money. I think one of the things you should be careful about is that there can be some fees associated with some of these apps. While they're free and um, using the, the site is free, depending on the method of payment that you're using, um, there could be a small fee like 3% for utilizing a credit card. 
if you want an instant transfer of funds, for instance, in Venmo, you can do that at a 1% fee. If you wait up to three days to get your funds, it's completely free. So be careful that when something is free, that there could be hidden fees within it and to understand that. All of these sites do a really good job of advertising and making some of this known to you, but you do have to do your homework when you're initially setting up those accounts and you should do it in a way that is gonna protect your assets the best that you possibly can. So think about if you have a Venmo or a Cash App or a PayPal account, is that connected to your primary banking account? And if it is, think about setting up a secondary account. You could do that at another institution. Um, so maybe you have a bank set up at home with your uh, family, or um, you could think about maybe opening up an account at Advantage Federal Credit Union, which happens to be here right on campus in Global uh, Village and have that small account that you have set up at Advantage be the account that you connect all of those apps to your Venmo or your Cash App or your PayPal. Another tip about being financially savvy that's related to credit cards and your banking institution is utilizing the alerts that you're allowed to set up. So if your bank allows you to set up an alert for when something deposits into your account or when money is withdrawn from your account, for instance, when you pay a bill or write a check, utilize those alerts, set those up on your phone, get a text message when that happens or set it up to send you an email. You wanna make sure that you know when money is coming in and out of your accounts. You're gonna have the ability to actually set the limit. So if you wanna say, whenever a transaction is more than $50, you're gonna get a text message. Um, that's gonna alert you to pay attention and take a look at your account. Sometimes we go about our daily business and we're not really thinking about how our banking accounts are, or our credit cards are being utilized. You can do this with a bank account, you can do it with a credit card. I've actually had alerts set up in both situations and that has helped me to check in with my husband when I see something post that I didn't you know, do, um, or when a check is written and it's um, cashed and the money's come out of my account, I know that my balance then has been decreased by that of check amount. Not everyone is fully aware what your balance is on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's helpful with these alerts to really track that spending, um, know the flow of your money and paying attention to things. And if something doesn't look right, you need to go back into your account and make sure that you are um, you know, checking and um, doing the homework, doing the investigation to make sure that that isn't a fraudulent charge. The next section of our presentation is talking a little bit about some money hacks. So ways that you can um, maybe reduce expenses and make your money stretch a little bit farther. So some great ways to do that are some of these apps like Ibotta or Rakuten. If you're already going to shop, whether that be at a store in person or you're gonna be online, these are ways that you can actually make those purchases either by using their um, browser extension or uploading your receipt. And if you make a purchase that's featured in the site, whether that's a percentage discount or maybe it's a set amount that you're gonna get back. Like if you buy Jiffy peanut butter and it happens to be an Ibotta for a 50 cent cash back, um, you're gonna scan the barcode on that peanut butter and you're gonna upload your receipt. And you might have bought several things that were featured um, at that particular store. And once you upload your receipt, you get the cash back into the, your Ibotta account then you can transfer the money from your Ibotta account to your banking account. And over time, this can really add up. So if you're already making the purchase, why not then get some additional cash back? Um, for Ibotta, I've been a lifetime, I, well, for the lifetime of me being a member, I've been a member now, I think for about three to four years, I've earned over $300 back um, on things that I was already going to buy whether that, again, is peanut butter or that is, um, you know, toilet paper or whatever it is, um, you know, you just have to do a little homework. You can see what those featured discounts are, and then you have to go through and upload your receipt. But by taking just a few moments, you can actually earn back some money for things that you're already purchasing. Rakuten is another great site. Um, a lot of that can be online purchasing. So, um, 
if you have it as a browser extension and you go to make a purchase, it generally pops up and lets you know that there's an available discount. You click to activate the discount that connects it to your Rakuten account. Um, you make the purchase and then you might get somewhere between three to often 11 to 15%. It really does, it does vary. Um, they run specials all the time where they're featuring a particular real retailer. And you know, maybe you're gonna buy sneakers through Nike or you're going to order something off of Amazon or whatever the store might be. Um, but by going through Rakuten, if they are a store that's affiliated and there's a percentage back, you can already get that discount just by simply shopping with them. Capital One um, is also very interesting. That is also a browser extension. And um, as you are searching the internet and you're trying to find a purchase and then you start to make that purchase, it will scan available coupon codes for you. And if there is a valid coupon code that applies, it will apply to that order and you'll obviously get the instant uh, discount. Honey is also another site that is very similar. Um, so if you have that as a browser extension um, and you're making purchases, um, it'll find if, if there's a, a valuable coupon that you can apply. And that might be anywhere between three and 8% off of your order. And that might not seem like a lot for a single purchase, but if you regularly use this over time, you know you re, you can really uh, accumulate a lot of discounts, and that money could then be transferred over to your banking account. You could maybe set it up with a separate savings account, and that can become your emergency fund. So all of the purchases that you're making through either Honey or Rakuten or Ibotta could be depositing into that emergency fund for you. Or thinking ahead and, and being you know, proactive, you want to take a vacation. Um, you're planning it maybe six to eight months out. You establish a, this account that you connect to these shopping sites and you then transfer all of the savings that you've earned into that account and then your vacation is already paid. So by the time you take the vacation, you're actually not going to be putting any of it on a credit card and you have you know, proactively saved to make sure that you're not putting yourself in debt for something like a vacation. Another um, thing to think about is coupons. Um, it seems maybe a little old fashioned, um, maybe coupons have gone by the wayside, but coupons are still a really valuable way to save money. Um, obviously you get the biggest bang for your buck with coupons and the Sunday paper. Um, so if you don't subscribe to get a physical copy of the paper, you can go to any real convenience store and pick up a copy of the paper. I think the paper is about $2.75, I think, for the Sunday paper about right now. And you get a pretty hefty stack of coupons. Um, you know, take the opportunity to cut them out and see if they match with your weekly shopping. The nice thing about coupons is that you can actually stack discounts. So um, for instance, you might have a manufacturer's coupon for laundry detergent and you've set up um, an Ibotta account and you went shopping, you used the discount that you got for the paper coupon, you came home and you uploaded your receipt for Ibotta. So now you got the savings of the coupon, you also got the cash back from Ibotta and depending on how you paid for that, you might've paid for it with a credit card that you have where you get a percentage back on groceries. And so if you've stacked those three discounts, you really have saved quite a bit on that one item. So in many ways, I kind of approach this like a savings game and figuring out the way that I can maximize the discount. How can I best utilize all of these methods? Um, you know, what credit card is gonna give me the best cash back or is gonna give me the, greatest uh, percentage back because I'm utilizing it for either gas or for groceries. And if you can stack these discounts, obviously you're gonna stack your savings. Um, another uh, tool that we would recommend is the Save Around Rochester coupon book. If anyone has used that, give us a thumbs up. It's a great coupon book for this area. Um, it's about $22 to purchase the book. Right now they've got a BOGO offer. So a buy one, get one free with free shipping. So two people could actually get the book for $22 with no cost for shipping. And if you use two offers in the book, you probably would have paid for the book. And the book has 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of coupons, um, often for a free entree at a restaurant or percentage off in a store. Um, and so you might want to think about getting a book like that um, and sharing it with your family or sharing it with your friends, um, you know, sharing the cost of the book and then, you know, taking a look and seeing what coupons are available and um, deciding who wants what, but it's a really great tool for reducing expenses. And again, anything that you're saving, think about putting that into your emergency fund, think about putting that into a savings account that's going to earn interest and obviously help you reach your financial goals. The last one I want to talk about is Popcart, and that is a comparison. Uh, it's a comparison site. So you log into Popcart. Um, again, it's a browser extension, and you can search for the best pr price for a particular item. So maybe you're looking to buy a new computer. Maybe you're looking to buy um, uh, a dress or a pair of jeans, whatever the item might be. Um, Popcart's actually going to do the work for you, and they're going to show you the best available prices and any special offers. So having some of these browser extensions can really help you do less of the groundwork yourself and let uh, the site actually do the analytics and find those discounts for you and help you save money. A couple other ones where we wanted to talk about either saving money or you know, finding things that don't cost a thing um, are right here on the RAT campus or you know, the RAT community. So Goodbye Goodbye is uh, an excellent opportunity for you to either donate things that you no longer have use for, and then you may be in a position to benefit from uh, purchasing those goods. The, the program itself has obviously been impacted by COVID, but they are bringing it back in a limited capacity. And so, you know, you might be able to find a, a micro fridge for, you know, $25. You might be able to get a couch for, you know, $30 or $40 when that out in the community might cost you, you know, $100 or even more. So Goodbye Goodbye is going to be a great way for you to either um, donate things that you no longer have a need for, and it's going to help someone else out, or you might be the recipient of being able to find something that you need at a really great cost. Um, free and for sale at RET is on Facebook. It is a group and you can join. And that's where you can also find a lot of people trying to sell items at a great price to their colleagues within the RET community. So, you know, you might be able to sell your textbooks back there. You might be able to sell a mattress or you might have furniture. Um, people sell cars on there. I mean, it really has a lot of offerings for the RAT community. And so if you're not already in that group, I would highly suggest that you check it out. It's a great way to find things at a reasonable price. Also, you might wanna look into the Buy Nothing Project and you can find this also on uh, Facebook. They're in different communities all around Rochester. And so um, depending where you might live, you know, if it's Chi Lai, if it's here in Henrietta, um, or in the, in the greater Rochester you know, city or community, you can find a group that is active in your area. And um, this is literally what it says, buy nothing. So it is exchanging items with community members that are in that group, um, finding a home for something that you have, or you finding something from someone else that may be looking to pass it on. So a great way to find things at no cost um, that still have a lot of life left in them and can help you reduce expenses. Maybe you're looking for some, maybe you have your um, upcoming interview for a co-op or a job um, post-graduation or for the summer, and you don't have either a tie or maybe you need a skirt or even a full suit. Burns Closet is located in the RIT food chair um, and that is available to any member of the RIT community. Even though we currently are not open as a walk-in pantry, um, you can reach out to us through our uh, Facebook email or message us on Facebook, and um, we can do a one-on-one -on -one appointment and walk you through the closet, and you can find whatever it is that you might need. Um, we have everything from shoes to handbags, suits and trousers, um, blouses, everything that you can think of, and it is all 100% free. 
thrifting is just a really great idea in general. And we wanted to make sure that we mentioned that there's um, Salvation Army and Goodwill that are very close to campus. And so um, this is where you can find some gently used goods at a great price and can help keep expenses low as well. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, along with thrifting and the selling of goods, um, Plato's Closet and um, um, I'm blanking on the other store, Clothes Mentor, and um, there's one in Pittsburgh called New to You, N-Y-T-N-T-Y Exchange, I believe, where you can sell your old clothes and buy um, some clothes, used clothes at reduced prices. So that all fits in with that as well. Um, so we wanted to move on to uh, discounts and what discounts your student ID can help you get. So just by being a college student, you are eligible for um, some discounts. So here are some uh, national discounts. Uh, Amtrak has a student one and it is specific by state. New York State is covered under that though. So it's about 15% off on um, most trains uh, in New York. So that's a great way if you travel that way at all or might wanna consider traveling that way um, to get a discount. Um, Valvoline right here in Jefferson Road offers 10% um, off on your oil changes and whatnot. Um, so that's an, an option to take up. Uh, Regal is currently closed due to COVID, but um, hopefully when it reopens, they do have a student discount. It's typically only available um, on certain days and um, showing, so just make sure you're, you're watching that. Um, Levi's, everybody needs new jeans, um, ha has a discount that is online only, and you actually have to sign up through a um, uh, group called Unidays, like University UNI, and we'll talk about that a little bit um, more, but it's a great way to get discounts at Levi's and other places. And then Amazon Prime, I think everybody probably knows that, but if you use your um, RIT email address, you get the six months um, student um, account for free. So those are some great ones to, to check out. Um, other ones, Verizon actually has um, a decent discount if the phone is in your name and then depending on how many lines you get. So um, if it's uh, one line, it's $10 off. And if it's two, it's 25. So um, if you are uh, Verizon, this is another way to establish credit. So if you currently are on your parents' plan, that's not really doing anything for your credit. But if you wanted to get on your own plan, you would get the $10 off and you would start establishing credit by paying that bill monthly. So um, that might be helpful in a couple different ways. Um, Brandini's is right over in um, Park Point and they have a, a good pizza deal there, 10% off. Uh, Firestone would be 15% um, off all services. So again, taking care of your car, that not only um, you get the discount, but taking care of your car regularly helps with um, not having big bills when things break, if you do that maintenance on a, on a regular uh, schedule there. Um, again, some more clothes, Banana Republic, J. Crew. these are typically online um, discounts that you have to look for. So um, taking your card into the store might not help you, but if you're shopping online, uh, you can do that there. Costco has a student membership promo promotion. There is a Costco um, pretty close to campus. And um, there's a $20 Costco shop card, which is similar to a, um, like a gift card when you pay for a membership and you can get that through that unit days that we mentioned. Um, and we'll, we'll, again, we'll put some of that information out there for you. RIT Inn is the hotel that RIT owns. And just by being an RIT member, you can um, get a, a room rate there that um, is cheaper than your typical room rate. So if your family's coming to town or whatnot and needs a, a place to stay, you can use the RT in and conference center. Uh, Greyhound buses, um, again, transportation, um, if you're going on a trip or if you're just headed home, um, another great student discount there. So 10% uh, off fares um, and 15% off if you use the student advantage discount card, which is another one that we're going to um, talk about. And I think the last one on the slide is Spotify, um, Hulu Showtime, get 50% off um, a Spotify student premium account, um, which includes the Hulu and Showtime uh, for $4.99 a month. So um, that's a pretty good deal. Great. 
Um, so here are some local, really local ones, um, you know, by being an RIT member. Um, BJ's, you don't have to pay a thing. You just go in and you show them your RIT ID when you cash out. They'll ask you if it's um, if you're a student or if you're doing it for work. Um, and you tell them you're, you're a student or an employee and you um, don't have to pay for a membership, but you can take advantage of all of the BJ's um, shopping and um, the bulk rates that you get, you know, for shopping at a club like that. Um, the picture on the bottom there is our gym. Um, you, you know you have um, access to the gym, but you can also get um, guest passes for family and friends. So if you have, uh, again, people visiting or whatnot, that might be something that you would want to look into. Um, Digital Den and Barnes and Noble both offer um, educational software at a, a discounted price. So um, what you might go to Best Buy, like if you need something for your computer, um, if you went to Best Buy, you would pay full price for it here. Um, there's a lot of software that is covered through um, as a considered an educational purpose. And so we are eligible for a discount by being RIT members. So you can go there and ask them about that. Um, and then we wanted to also mention that we have Advantage Federal Credit Union. Um, Sharon already mentioned this, but they are a great way, again, to start both establishing credit and um, they are typically a, a fee free, right? Like they're fee free. So um, some banks will charge you fees for ATMs, for um, just establishing accounts and whatnot, but the credit union does not do that. So it's a great way um, to have your, your money in a secure place, fee free, no, bin, no minimum balances, and you can use the ATM um, right here on campus. Um, so we have, they have quite a few, uh, disc um, I'm sorry, great rates that you can take advantage of too. Uh, next For slide. students that are going to finance a computer. So yeah. if you're thinking about a computer, um, Advantage does a nice program um, with us um, here at RIT and the rates are very low. When you think about a credit card, your rates are typically somewhere between probably 12 and possibly 24% interest rate. Um, they have rates that are less than 5% on uh, taking out a loan for purchasing a computer. So definitely something to think about. Um, um, also, the shared secured credit card is something that they can work with lots of our students on to build credit, and it's literally steps away in Global Village. Um, thanks, Sharon. I, I had forgotten about that. And I also wanted to mention, um, Wallace had added in about the BJ's GAF. That's my favorite thing, and I forgot. So thank you for mentioning that in the um, chat, Wallace. But you can all, they have a gas station behind BJ's as well. Um, and again, you, you pull up, you show them your RIT ID, they swipe um, the card for you, the, the BJ's membership card for you. And it typically, it can, be, it can be anywhere between just two cents, but I've gotten it where it's like 15 cents, 17 cents cheaper than the gas station across the street. So that's definitely um, something to take advantage of that. Again, it's a few cents at a time, but it all adds up. Um, okay, so here are some more general discounts to think about just in, you know, life in general. So defensive driving can help you by taking that class can help you get a discount on your insurance. So um, that's a, a great thing to do every few years, refresh your um, driving skills and also get a discount um, on your insurance. Um, Member rewards. So um, we've talked a little bit about these and, you know, I think everybody knows about these, but, you know, buy buy nine, get one free. And again, those are things that add up a little at a time, whether it's a coffee at Java's and getting your card punch there or, um, you know, rentals or spending money at um, certain stores. You know, I mentioned Plato's Closet and um, Clothes Mentor. Those are ones also where you, every time you buy something there or you sell back there, they're also giving you, um, they're punching a card type thing for, um, a certain percentage of whatever you have bought or sold, and then you get a percentage off um, on a purchase later on. So all of those things can add up. Um, on here, we talked a little bit about the Student Advantage card. Um, this is something that you sign up for online, and it has lots of different um, 
discounts and whatnot through it. So it's one of those things where um, you kind of have to go see what they offer and then see if it applies to things that you're interested in. Um, but we mentioned a couple of uh, places that use that. I believe um, Greyhound was one of those um, to get those packages and whatnot. Um, and then Unidays, um, uh, again, uh, you sign up once and you're eligible for multiple discounts. And that was where the Levi's and some of the other clothing um, online shopping came in. So those are there and you can see the spelling there of Unidays if you're interested. I think a note of caution with any of these type of discount programs is you wanna make sure that if there is a cost, in many cases there is none, um, a lot of these loyalty programs or member reward programs don't come with any cost. Um, but if you are going to expend the money for, say, the student advantage discount card or you're going to sign up with Unidays, if there are any fees or costs involved, you want to make sure that you are going to benefit from that discount more than the cost initially. So, for instance, if you travel on Greyhound quite a bit, signing up for the student advantage discount card might make sense for you because you're going to earn back more in the discounts than you're spending on the card up front. Um, sometimes retailers will try to entice you um, with some of these perks or with uh, discounts and signing up for store credit cards. Um, again, you wanna make sure that whatever the perk that you're getting affiliated with, with that program or that discount is going to be worth it in the long run. And you know your spending, you know your habits, that you're going to be really the best um, person to make that decision for yourself. Um, but we don't want to encourage you to make expenditures to potentially get savings if you really aren't going to utilize that. So again, you know, that is something that you kind of have to look at your income and your expenses and make some of those decisions for yourself. But make sure whatever that expenditure is, is going to benefit for you and that it isn't going to be just an added expense. Really, this is about reducing expenses and sometimes spending a little bit of money um, can actually reduce your expenses a lot more in the long run. And I think also some of these, you have to consider your time as well. So like um, I think about the time I spend on email and um, what is it worth it to me to get another um, another email from Marriott? Like we were talking about rewards programs. Um, Marriott doesn't offer, um, they, they charge you for Wi-Fi unless you're signed up as a Marriott rewards member. So to me with traveling with kids, it's worth it to get those emails so that I have Wi-Fi in the hotel. <laughs> but time is something um, to consider as well. Time and privacy, I think in many cases, a lot of these sites that offer discounts, the, the perk that they're getting or why they're involved in some of this is that they want your data. They want your information. And so they know your spending history. They'll know the things that you're making purchases on. And if you're comfortable with having that information be out there, not necessarily your financial information, but if you, you know, your shopping history and your preferences and things of that nature, um, then these sites do make sense, right? You're going to get discounts. Um, you are able to stack those discounts in many cases. Um, but some people are very private and they don't want any of that information out there. And if that's you, then that's probably these, some of these things that we've talked about are not necessarily going to be the options for you to explore. So as we wrap up here, um, we did want to share with you some information about our upcoming series. So today was our very first session, um, and we have three others that are happening all through the month of April because it is National Financial Literacy Month. Um, so we have a session next week on building your financial foundation. Um, An RAT alum, Quincy Fox, and her husband will be sharing a lot of information around budgeting, investing, demystifying insurance, how do you um, handle debt? Um, there's a method called the snowballing method. And so they'll talk a little bit more about that, but really about setting your strong financial foundation um, to get you started um, you know, for reaching those financial goals. Um, on the 19th, we're gonna have a session with uh, Kelly uh, Swartwout and she is going to talk about student loans. So if you have a student loan, this is gonna be a really uh, valuable session you're actually gonna log into the student aid website, the federal student aid website. And she is going to talk to you about where you can see how much you owe and identifying the different interest rates, 
and payment options. So that's gonna be very valuable for anyone that has a student loan. And then our last session um, is going to talk about compensation and benefits packages. So many people are gonna be in the situation where you're getting ready for graduation and you're having an offer of employment and often people make the mistake that the highest salary is the best option for them when you really need to understand what goes into an offer. What is the uh, salary, which is considered direct pay? And then what are the benefits, which is indirect pay? And sometimes based on that benefit package, it actually might be to your advantage to have something that has stronger indirect pay options for you than just the higher direct pay. And so Judy DeCourcy here from Human Resources is going to talk um, talk about this and, and really help people understand what a job offer is and what a compensation package might look like. So if someone is thinking about going on co-op and um, you might have some options to weigh there or you're getting ready to graduate and um, you know, you're weighing some of these opportunities even right now, this would be a great session for you to participate in. Lastly, we want to just remind everyone that we are on social media, the RIT Financial Literacy Team, which just is a group of individuals here at RIT that are dedicated to spreading financial literacy and educating students on financial literacy topics. We can be found on Twitter, on Facebook, and recently we added Instagram. So please feel free to follow us, like us, um, and we look forward to seeing you at a future uh, series um, either on the 12th, the 19th, or the 26th. Are there any last questions, any questions that anyone has before we wrap things up? Well, seeing none, we wanna thank you for being here and we hope to see you at a future event. Have a great day. Thank you.